Hey everybody, it's Party Leet, and as the teasing from the folks over at Creative Assembly continues, so do we. With the previous teaser, we talked about how this is all likely the start of the Total War Warhammer 3 marketing campaign, rather than some DLC. It's a much more involved process, and I don't think any other DLC has been treated in this way. We also talked about how both Korn and Kislev seem to be in the night skies. If you want to watch said analysis of the first teaser, you can follow the link in the description down below and under the eye at the top right corner of the screen. But if that first teaser confirms the presence of Cornate factions and something from Kislev, this one, well, not only does it confirm a faction, but I think it also hints at a release date. Let's give it a watch first. Heed the heavens. Heed the heavens. Uh, heed the heavens. And heed them I shall, and I am certain to find them once again lacking of anything worthy of my heeding. Sigma tests me, though there is little left for him to test. The Piper. Today you show me the Piper. We shan't see the third constellation tomorrow. I'm sure of it. Alright, so we find ourselves in the same setting as before. I had previously wondered if we were to get more of these, if we might not see different factions looking to the skies, but no. So could this be a confirmation that the Empire is in Game 3? Imagine being an outsider to the Warhammer world, reading the word Altdorf over and over again during marketing, and then never seeing it mentioned again, especially in the game. That would be super weird as an outsider. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. Our man here sounds increasingly annoyed at the orders he's been receiving, and under the watchful eyes of the advisor from the first game, as many of you pointed out in the comments, he looks through his telescope. Today, he finds the Piper, a very interesting star sign for a few very interesting reasons. For one, the constellation we saw in the first teaser is ascendant in late spring, early summer, while the Piper is ascendant in autumn. So either we are many days apart between teasers, or these constellations are appearing in back-to-back -back days. This line at the end here suggests that we're seeing back-to-back -back days. We shan't see the third constellation tomorrow. I'm sure of it. It also suggests strongly that we're seeing another one tomorrow, maybe. So, something strange is up with the stars. This particular constellation is interesting for another reason as well. The Piper is the sign of the trickster, and if the last constellation revealed corn, then this one reveals the chaos god Thinch. Now, I'm a big fan of Thinch myself, so if this means we're getting the warriors or demons of Thinch right at launch, I am all for it. If you haven't watched my speculation video about the factions I expect at launch, I have three theories, and one of those threes include all four chaos gods and Kislev. You can check it out linked in the description down below as well, and it's also under the eye at the top right corner of the screen. And so far, what these teasers have shown us lines up pretty well with that line of thinking. Now, as for the constellation itself, it is said that great leaders are born under the sign of the Piper, but it is also the star under which traitors are born. This is the sign of negotiators and tricksters alike, so everything here shouts Zinch. It's interesting that these two signs would show up back to back for another reason. Horn and Sinch loathe each other. Now, does this imply that they're working together for a greater goal, or just the presence of both of their influences, something which is almost guaranteed to bring with it conflict? Total war, perhaps. This works out on a personal level too, because I was in the middle of writing my Tsinch faction speculation video as of just a few weeks ago, and I think they can be a very exciting faction to play with. Very focused on magic, maybe even hinting at a diplomacy rework if we're lucky to play up that kind of trickster negotiator angle. I'm really hoping to get that video done and released in the near future, because I'm really excited to talk about the potential over here if we are in fact getting a separate sort of demons or warriors of Tsinch faction with Game 3. Now. There's one last interesting bit here. Don your tinfoil hats for this one, even I think it's a little out there. Now, apart from the extremely suspicious behavior of our man writing about the first constellation while talking about a potential third constellation, completely ignoring the constellation he just saw, 
we see a very interesting note over here. Now, I know these are two separate diagrams, but if we read between the metaphorical lines, we find the red circle to be roughly where Earth is typically placed close to the end of the year. I'm not suggesting the release date might be in the fall or winter of 2021, but that certainly sounds more realistic than a spring or summer release date. This is obviously just random doodles that I'm reading far too into though, and if I keep this up, Creative Assembly might just stop putting anything visual on screen for their teasers, but hey, it's something to think about. The other way to interpret these doodles is something about spring, but Again, that's way too tight a timeline for all the marketing, for the release, and besides, Warhammer 2 released at the end of September, so it wouldn't be unreasonable to expect the same here. There isn't too much else here. The final screen shows us the same constellations as before. I stand by my assessment that this is potentially Ursa Major or Ursa Minor, and some of you have suggested that this is the Seven Sisters. The only connection I could find there was with Hinduism. The constellation is known as Kritika and is associated with a god of war, Kartikya. Perhaps a further hint at Korn here, or if we want to be really silly, we can pretend that this implies Ind will eventually be in the game. And as much as I would love that, I doubt it'll be at launch if it ever happens at all. Like, that's wishful thinking at its best, but do consider the fact that we are returning to the old world outside of Total War Warhammer, and so maybe, maybe, maybe. But I'm just, nah, that's it's too silly. Again, I do hope that this video has got your mind churning in ways that it hasn't previously been churning. I suspect we're building up to something major here, and you can rest assured I'll be covering it every step of the way. So, if you're not already a subscriber and you're excited to see some Total War Warhammer 3 coverage, I presume, Go ahead and subscribe, there's lots more to come, I am sure. As always, a massive thanks goes out to all of the channel members and patrons who've been supporting the channel on a monthly basis. Y'all keep us alive and running smoothly. And of course, a big ol' thanks goes out to each and every one of you for watching. Until next time, cheers.